So I think we have a problem. In financial services, we've gone through all kinds of crises. We've gone through crisis of brand, we've gone through crisis of structure, we've gone through crisis of the economy, and these firms are trying to go through massive transformations. And the issue is when they think about talent, when they look at the talent that will lead them through that, we're looking at that in a very typical lens, a very typical box checking sort of approach that we have for, to be quite frank, 10, 15, 20 years. I was talking to a new client the other day, and they were talking about how they acquire leadership. And they said that as they think about business every day, they do not think about talent in the same way. There are things like education. There are things like X number of years at another bank or another banking organization. It is certain titles. It's certain accomplishments. They fit neatly in boxes. And the issue is that just replicated a lot of the thinking. That worked for a while. But now the banks need to transform. And they really don't know how to. So I do think there are ways that a client can really differentiate their acquisition strategy. One is really thinking about the skills and expertise they bring into the job. For the first time ever, we're going to have four generations in the workplace at one time. So you think about the next gens who are now rising up, and you've got the millennials, you have the Gen X, and you have the traditionalists. They're all working together. And you think about the traditionalists, which are the baby boomers. Uh, pretty much, and the next gens, which aren't even in the workforce yet, they interact, they, they network very differently, they do everything differently, but they're going to be in the workplace in two years, in fact, the Gen X generation is going to be 33% of the workforce. Recruiting and finding that person is almost the easy part. Onboarding is really a tough part, making them successful. How do you bring that person in to really get the best out of them? And so financial institutions really need to think about compensation models, incentive models, work styles, how they partner those people, potentially people that have been in the organization for a long time, how you provide mentorship, how you do global when actually you want to build product, and really the biggest thing is what is good. For example, if you look at banking institutions, the way to get promoted, the way to get paid more money was to have bigger teams. It was to take on bigger and bigger roles and become more and more of a manager. That's how you made managing director, that's how you made partner. People that have really been driving innovation in non-financial services worlds were promoted and were made more senior and made more money because they had great ideas, they innovated. So how do you really marry these two very different things in an environment that doesn't align with how they were incented in the past? Where we've seen the greatest success is where the CEO or a very senior C-suite person actually very much sponsors that creative hiring, sponsors that person to be successful, and is able to give them the air cover in the organization. Without that, this person's going to be an organ reject. It just will not work in the organization. So having that air cover, having that leader who can really you know, sit on the beanbag but wear the suits or transfer between both of those worlds is incredibly important to make this successful. But we need to really marry the experience of content and experience of what banking is with some new fresh ideas. And this really, in our view, is a, a chance to really change the talent paradigm, to change how you hire, how you think about talent, how you retain talent, how you develop talent. This is an incredible opportunity for the banks who are willing to be a little bit innovative, take some risks, and really drive something forward to really be differentiated in our industry.